I now have the great honor of introducing Dan LaKendra, Managing Director for Bank of America. Thank you, Dan and Bank of America, for being lead sponsor of the off End Conference for the 16th year in a row. It's fantastic. <laughs> Under Dan's tireless and passionate leadership, Bank of America has built the nation's largest CDFI loan fund an investment portfolio of more than $2 billion. In the past few years of enormous change in the CDFI industry, Dan and his team brought their innovative thinking and the full resources of Bank of America to elevate the profile of CDFIs, support CDFIs to be successful PPP lenders, and help CDFIs leverage other public and private sector resources. It is with tremendous gratitude that I introduce a dedicated champion of the CDFI industry, Dan Latendra. Good morning and welcome to New York City. This city is my home, and for the next three days, it's the home of the 38th Annual Opportunity Finance Network Conference. Now, if this is your very first in-person OFN conference, welcome. My name is Dan Latendra, and I manage the CDFI portfolio. If you are a returning participant from past OFN conferences, particularly if you've been to several OFN conferences, I know what you're thinking. Good God, do we have to listen to Dan again. I mean, <laughs> couldn't we just skip the warm-up act and go directly to next door, Bill Bynum, and a panel of subject matter experts that are going to discuss and debate some of the issues, most important issues, for the industry. And I promise you, we will get to the main event very shortly. But it has been 1,096 days since the close of the last in-person OFN conference. 1,096 days since I was last here with you. And I miss you. <laughs> I miss being here. And so I hope you indulge me for just a few moments to share a few observations about the state of the CDFI industry and where we believe it might be headed. As I was Standing backstage listening to Beth Lipson's speech, I was nodding in agreement again and again because I believe that Beth hit on so many of the critical points in the industry today. In fact, indeed, this past two and a half year period has been a time of enormous growth. More CDFIs, more capital, more investors, and more impact than I have ever seen before. Indeed, I believe we are in the midst of a great leap forward for the CDFI industry. I can only recall two periods in my CDFI career that can even compare to what we are currently in the midst of. Back in 1995 and 1996, when the federal government first discovered community development loan funds and created the CDFI fund, both creating a CDFI certification that recognized and drew attention to these important institutions and provided public sector support to the institutions that are CDFIs, not just at the transaction or the project level. That was precedent setting and set the stage for future growth. Indeed, for the 24 months immediately following the creation of the CDFI fund, there were over 200 organizations that either raised their hands to become CDFIs or created de novo organizations that were indeed CDFIs themselves. A great leap forward. And then again in 2009 through 2011, I believe we saw a second great leap forward in the time of and immediately following the Great Recession. You may recall in the period leading up to that, there was a lot of discussion about what would happen to CDFIs and CDFI borrowers in the event of a significant economic downturn. 
common wisdom was that CDFI borrowers were more fragile. Loans to them for, from CDFIs were more risky and that a significant economic recession could indeed imperil significant numbers of CDFIs. And what happened? Well, I recall that there were investment banks that failed. <laughs> there were commercial banks and consumer banks that failed. Finance companies, hedge funds, Fannie, Freddie experienced catastrophic losses. And CDFIs? CDFIs came out of that period stronger than ever, once and for all demonstrating the importance of combining patient capital with deep and lasting technical assistance to support borrowers. And then we come to the last two and a half year period. Once again, CDFIs faced a time of stress, a global health catastrophe, an economic dislocation and isolation that none of us could have ever imagined, and a national awakening and reckoning with respect to racial equity and economic opportunity. And once again, CDFIs stood strong in the face of stress. There are so many examples of how the impact and the scale of CDFIs increased so dramatically during that period in time. Just one example, as you heard, the Paycheck Protection Program, or PPP. CDFIs provided over $30 billion to more than 1.4 million small business borrowers that would not have otherwise benefited at an average loan size of a hair over $21,000 enormous impact that we could not have imagined 10 years, 20 years, 30 years ago. I believe that this scale represents both opportunities and some challenges for the CDFI industry. Opportunity. I believe that CDFIs now represent invaluable partners with mainstream financial institutions for referrals clients to CDFIs that would not otherwise be served. At Bank of America, we are re-looking from the top to bottom at how we can re-engineer a referral partnership with CDFIs to seamlessly refer not one, two, a dozen, but thousands, tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of clients to CDFIs that might not otherwise be served challenges. I believe that the surge we've seen recently in interest rates are indeed going to be a challenge for the industry. In past years, CDFIs might not have been impacted as much by dramatic increases in interest rates. After all, many of the investors in CDFIs, including Bank of America, often provide very low cost capital, sometimes at or below the capital market's cost for CDFIs. And I think that is possible at $10 million, $100 million, but the reality is you can't provide capital at that level of pricing for $30 billion. This is going to be a challenge going forward and calls on all of us to prioritize, indeed triage, the, most important, the, the lowest cost capital for the most critical issues and needs that CDFIs face. I think going forward, CDFIs, like every large financial institution, are going to need to measure their carbon footprint, not just in operations, but in financing activities, and build a path to achieving net zero and show significant progress this decade. If the pandemic taught me anything, any lessons, it was to never lose the opportunity to express my appreciation, my thanks, to those people who have helped me along the way, both personally and professionally. There were so many industry leaders that went before me to create uh, CDFIs and blaze the trails of the community development financial institution industry. I am 
deeply indebted to all of those that helped me and reached out personally to correct my misperceptions of the industry and set me along a better path. People like Cliff Rosenthal and Sister Corinne, Martin Trimble, Martin Eeks, Mark Pinsky, Nancy Andrews, Bill Bynum, Ron Wazinski, Clara Miller, Julie Eads, Elsie Meeks, and others. I will be forever grateful. I would not be here, I would not be anywhere in CDFIs, but for your personal intervention. Thank you. I also need to thank, need to thank, my Bank of America colleagues, many of whom have been with me for over 15 years. Susan Green, Amy Brusiloff, Katja Shirley, Susan Winstead, John Paul Campbell, Michael Winter, Ellie, Catherine, Mitch, Sandy. They have helped build a $2 billion portfolio, the largest in the industry, and our work isn't done yet. We need to build the portfolio much bigger. And my final thank you to Opportunity Finance Network leadership, Lisa Mensa. Lisa, it was five years ago, I think, that you called me to let me know that you were thinking of joining Opportunity Finance Network. And I mentioned then that we need you much more than you needed us but that if you joined, you would have a tremendous impact and leave a lasting legacy. You did, and you have. strength, the passion, the drive for OFN these past few years. But I think we would both agree that the strength, the resilience, the backbone, the continuity, and the smarts of the organization in so many ways is Beth Lipson. <laughs> Beth, when I came to my first OFN conference 25 years ago, you were already here. <laughs> but as I recall, it didn't look like this. I hope that over the course of this morning, you take the opportunity just to sneak a peek, just to take a look at the incredible growth and the incredible change of this event and the industry. This is as much your legacy and your impact as anyone else's. I ask every person in this room, please join me in thanking both Lisa Mensa and the CEO and President of Opportunity Finance Network Conference, Beth Lipson. <laughs>